Congratulations on the deal. What was it like to get it done? What was the hardest part? Hi, Alex. Uh, thank you, and, and thanks for having me today. Uh, in terms of hardest part, gosh, I don't know. We have had a long relationship with uh, Petronet and, and with the Indians, as you know, 6 to 7% GDP growth, 15% LNG growth. Um, they need the LNG, and we're developing the project. So it's pretty simple on our side. We simply invited them to come and be our partner. Well, but what, I, what I wanted to point out is that there are a lot of LNG projects trying to get done, and the fact that you have worked in this industry for a very long time, uh, the founder of Tellurian, Ashrik Suki, as well, who started Chenier, is that it's about the personal relationships. So describe what it's like from that sense versus, say, an upstart that doesn't have those kind of contacts, just like wants to make a terminal. Well, uh, Alex, you know, we're trying to do something a little bit different at Driftwood. We recognize that the LNG market is becoming commoditized, and so we need to deliver low-cost LNG. And in that context, instead of rather, rather than signing a bunch of contracts, we said to the LNG community, why don't you come be our partner? We know we can deliver LNG into the vessel in the Gulf Coast for between 3 and $4.00. So it will be delivered into India between six and uh, between five and six dollars an MMBTU. And you talked about the relationships. I wholeheartedly agree. Uh, Tolarian has a group of very experienced people, and um, it's about reliability. We know we have a dependable relationship with Bechtel, and the construction of the plant is going to happen on time and on budget. So the reliability and the security of supply to India is very important. So the uh, the phase, what you're going to be building, the total is like 16.6 million tons per annum of LNG uh, capacity, but you only need 12 in order to commit the money to the project. You have a few more to go. You're going to have eight after this. You have four. Where's it going to come from? What regions? Ah, good question. Yes, four million tons remaining, and we'll have uh, the rest of the buyers, Asia, Middle East. Uh, you're talking about Middle East. There were some conversations potentially if you're talking to Saudi Arabia. Uh, Saudi Arabia did ink a deal with Sempra's Port Arthur project in Texas. Does that take them off the table, or are you still talking to them? The Middle East is an incredible region. Um, increase in gas demand in the region itself and a strategic decision by several of the um, uh, state-owned companies to move into natural gas and LNG and actually build trading portfolios. It doesn't have to be Saudi Arabia. You're saying there's other customers in the region? Definitely. Uh, when it comes to Asia, does the trade war between the U.S. and China hamper either demand or hamper the conversations that you get to have? On the demand side, no. China is expected to be a 100 million ton market. And in fact, when you think of China and India together, um, we need to put another 100 million tons of new LNG into the supply side of the equation just to meet the demand in growth in China and India alone. So from the demand side, uh, I'm very bullish on the growth of the LNG market overall, even in the context of the trade. Um, we and the Chinese companies are uh, really standing on the sidelines as um, the two presidents are deciding uh, how to conclude an amicable trade agreement. Um, and they need gas and we have gas. So there's a win-win-win in there.